All right, now, as you can see, I have the timing belt off. I have the, um, uh, <laughs> the plenum off. Next thing I'm gonna get started doing, you're gonna see a little wiring mess there. I started a little bit of a tuck there uh, while my recording device, my phone, charged. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and start showing you how I'm gonna be removing the cylinder head now. To me, I'm kind of going at this blind already. Um, I know how to remove a cylinder head. Uh, I'm not 100% sure on this mess of hard pipes back here on what's going to come off with it and what isn't. Um, but I guess I will find out. Now, like I said, I've already removed the timing belt. Um, I have removed the plenum. I have removed this little bolt here that holds, I'm gonna show, oh, holds the EGR to the head, the EGR pipe, so you can see it moves a little bit more freely now. Not necessarily free, but freer. Um, next, what I'm gonna do is now, luckily for me, I'm only removing the um, passenger side head. I'm almost tempted to remove the driver's side. It looks like a much bigger pain, but I'm almost tempted to because I'm sure once I uh, get this running again with just the uh, brand new passenger side head gasket, I'm sure the driver one will go, and then I'll be having to do this all over again. So I'm almost tempted to, but uh, I was going to say, but just looking at this, you can see this plate here that has to come off uh, because the intake has to come off. I'm going to take this nut off, remove this um, idler here, and then I'm going to have to remove the cam gears and take this plate off. But before all that, I guess I'm going to go ahead and remove the fuel rail, which is that ground right there, I believe. And uh, then there's a little 10 millimeters that go around it and you're going to remove all those and then uh, you should just be able to pull the injectors out of there it may be quite a pain if you haven't done it before but they should just pop out of there you're going to be sure not to lose these plastic pieces though uh, those are somewhat important so make sure you keep track of those all right now uh, as you can see i have the injectors out next thing i'm going to do is remove this nut remove the pulley and uh then I'll have to start working on the uh, cam gears. Now I'm going to remove these four bolts that hold uh, onto the intake cam gear. Now behind this plate there's a, a spring. So you don't want to take these, uh, just like take that one off, take that one off, take that one off, take that one Like you want to kind of, I would prefer to take this off a little bit at a time. I'm not concerned about this warping, but um, I would just prefer that a spring doesn't come flying out at a, uh, a direction I'm not ready for. So I'm going to take this off, like I said, seven millimeter. And uh, yeah, now that I have that removed, that's about as far as I'm going to go with removing the camshaft uh, until I remove the valve cover and I'm able to hold the cam in place when I remove that bolt. So before you try to remove this, you want to go ahead and remove the spark plug hole covers. Right here is just these uh, four 12 millimeters and pull that off there. So I'm gonna go ahead and get, looks like a Phillips, probably number three, and um, take uh, this intake valve cover off. Now that you have that cover removed, you can grab your rubber mallet or dead blow or whatever you have and break that loose. And just lift it right off there. Now, I actually don't know what size this is, but what you're going to want to do is, oh God, if I can get this off here, get you a wrench that fits on this hex part of the camshaft. I'm just using a crescent because I did not have a wrench big enough. And then you're going to get a 19 millimeter socket and break this bolt loose and pull it out of there. But you're just using this to hold the camshaft in place so it doesn't spin and bend valves possibly. All right, next I'm going to removing the intake, or not the intake, I just removed the intake. Remove the exhaust cam gear. And again, to do that, I'm probably just gonna leave this uh, all together right now. There's no reason not to. Um, you know what? 
I think with the way this one is, I think I can actually just unbolt this real quick. I don't think it'll spin and uh, pull it off there without having to remove the valve cover first. But man, I'm trying to see what. Okay, there's one bolt right there behind the EGR, which is awesome. Gotta love the EGR. Now I have the uh, eight bolts that hold the uh, valve cover on the exhaust. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and the same thing. Uh, again, the worst one was probably, this one I was able to use my U-joint and get it out of there, but it still wasn't fun. But, all right, now that's broken loose, I think. Well, it sounded like it was. Part of it is, at least, this part. Uh, I may actually have to get a pry bar underneath over here to lift this side off. Well, it's kind of wanting to come. Uh, all right, well, you can see what you have to do. You just have to wiggle this and break the seal um, and lift it off there. So that's what I'm going to do. You can see that to remove that, I had to move this EGR way out of the way. Uh, so, yeah, it's not crazy fun, but it wasn't terrible. Uh, next, same thing. I'm going to uh, hold the can using this part right here and then uh, undo the bolts that hold the gear on. Now you can probably use some sort of puller to do this, but you can grab the cam gear and just move it left and right and pull it off there just like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove this cover right here. Looks like a couple of 10 millimeters there, 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 and there. And then after that, it looks like there's one big, I don't even know what that is, maybe like a 17 or something, but there's that there, and then uh, I should be able to pop that cover off there. Now that I have that cover off, I'm able to remove the intake, so I'm going to go around with, it looks like an Allen of some size, um, can't tell just by looking at it, but an Allen, and there's some probably 12 millimeters right here that are going to hold this intake on, uh, so wait, what's this hard pipe back here? Oh my gosh. So, with the valve covers on, I can see this stuff a little bit better. I see a tin holding this hard pipe on right here. I should be able to move it a little bit. Um, so I'll move that or try to and see what it looks like from there. Because right now you can see this is the intake goes and this hard pipe is blocking the edge of it. So, uh, I don't know. We'll see in a second. All right, so what I'm going to try to do is, you can see right here, um, I'm going to try to unhook this bypass right here, and there's another clamped line right here. I'm gonna try to unclamp that, and that should free up a little bit, but there's still a uh, clamp back here, and I believe it goes See if I can see it move. Well, this is actually all PCV right here. This bit right here that's blocking is PCV. Um, man. So I should be able to unhook that PCV line there and pop it off there. I'm trying to think of how terrible it's going to be to get it back on though. Is my only concern with all this other nonsense back here. All right, now I've been fighting with this uh, hard line here that has the coolant. And the, the annoying part isn't the coolant, the annoying part is the PCV that comes all the way around and blocks off the uh, studs to remove the lower intake. You can see right here. So. I've been fighting with this and it turns out there is a bolt that I'm missing. There's one 
on top of there, right there that you take off. And there's also one, you can't even see it. Like honestly, I mean, I wouldn't be able to see, see it if I wouldn't saw a picture of it uh, removed. But like directly under my finger, there's a bolt that holds it to the head. So uh, need to remove that and then this should be able to slide out. I mean, that's the plan, it should, but this probably actually won't be a fun thing to remove because this harness right here is in the way. I might actually unbolt that and then do it, but uh, we'll see. This bolt right here, this 12 millimeter that holds on the uh, hard line, so far has been the worst part of this um, cylinder head removal. But uh, now that bolts out, so hopefully this hard line will pop right out of there, but let's find out. Alright, this bit right here was probably, along with the bolt that I didn't see over here, is probably the worst part that we'll run into. I'm probably jinxing myself when I say that, but this was absolutely terrible. Now, to get this I had to bend this slightly. I had to move this water pipe back. Uh, you also have to remove, there's a little fastener right here, uh, you have to remove that and remove this line and you have to do all sorts of shimming to get the PCV hose that's on this end off, like you have to shove the hard line over this way, shove the hose uh, on further onto it and then you have to lift the hose up and pull the hose off and it it's it's stupid all of it's stupid but now we got that that off um i think at this point it's getting dark sun's going down i don't really want to do this at night so i'm going to call it a night um with that i hope this video helped you out i'm going to pick up where i left off uh, as soon as possible but uh if this video helped you out leave a like that'd be awesome if not leave a comment ask any questions you have and i'll try to help you out as best as i can uh, most of all, just let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching.